on guard. Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who have spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong. And as always, we want to leave a nightlight on for you. That nightlight is out of 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren which are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal Glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Man, that's good news. I love that verse. I love verses that teach me to be on guard, spiritual warfare. Paul Chapel, in one of his devotionals, he sends out a, a, a devotional every day. And the devotional for today, I thought, was very appropriate for the season in which we're in. It talks about, a, in February of 2014, an, an Ethiopian airline 767, the co-pilot hijacked the plane. And he wanted to go to Switzerland so that he could claim political asylum. And while he was flying the plane, he went across Italy's airspace. Well, Italy scrambled their fighter jets because that's what they do to defend their airspace and their sovereign nation. And those those Italian jets escorted that uh, 767 until it flew into France airspace. When it went into France airspace, their fighter jets took over the escort. When it went into Swiss airspace, the France jets had to stay with it because the Swiss government, because of budget cuts, they only operated their jets on a 9 to 5 basis during daytime hours because of noise problems from the jets and budget cuts. And that's just insane. So they'd given up the really protecting uh, with the main one of the main parts of their country, the airspace of their country, because of budget cuts. You have an adversary, the devil, who walketh about like a roaring lion. He wants to devour you. He hates you. He's on the job twenty four seven, three hundred and sixty five days out of the year. He despises you. He hates you because you're an image bearer. Genesis 1.27 says that we are created in the image of God. And because you're created in, in the image of God, that's a big bullseye on you uh, from Satan's perspective. He wants to take you out. He can't fight God directly, but what he can do is attack God indirectly through attacking the image bearers. And so he's been against humanity from the beginning. That's why Satan tempted Adam and Eve in the garden. That's why Satan it was after destroying Messiah, uh, in, in causing Herod to kill all the babies under two years of age to try to kill Messiah because Messiah would be helping those image bearers to find eternal life. And so Satan's program is always against us. Now, Peter, Jesus told Peter that he wanted to have him, that he could sift him. In, in other words, Satan was in a special way after Peter. And he tells Peter to watch and pray, lest he enters into temptation. Then Jesus goes on into the garden, comes back and finds Peter asleep. He's asleep on the job. He's unguarded. Uh, you and I, <clears throat> the, the, the main thrust of this is you and I in these last days are in an intense time of spiritual warfare. We need to be on guard. We need to develop situational awareness is what the military calls it. Say you're in the military, you're a soldier, you come into a room or into a situation, but they train you to have situational awareness. You assess the situation that you're in. You're finding out what potential threats are in that room, what potential cover is in that room, what potential exits and entrances, uh, egress and exits are in the room. You, you want to know all that stuff and how what weaponry is at hand. It's called situational awareness. We have the armor of God, Ephesians 6. Study that out when you get a chance. It's the whole armor of God that we can put on. We need to have that. We need to be suited up. But we also need to have a wise mind so that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. That word devices means his schemes. 
his MO, you could call it, his modus operandi, how he typically operates. Once you know his MO or his strategy, then you're more able and effective to mount a guard against it. So say I'm a man, and so men, one of the ways Satan attacks men is he tries to attack us through the lust monster. And so all the TV shows saturated with lust images, The world is saturated with lust images. And so Job in the Old Testament said that he made a covenant with his eyes not to look upon a woman. And what he meant not to look upon a woman, to lust after her. And so he he understood how the attack was likely to come. Um, and, And so you just have to know, know yourself, know Satan, know where your weak areas are, know where you do be especially on guard, and you can't ease up. You've got to be on guard all the time. Satan is the master of attacking when you least expect it. And so we have to be on guard, and we have to not be ignorant of his devices. So let me just encourage you to find a battle buddy to be praying with you and and uh, the, to be studying the Word of God with you so that you can effectively fight these spiritual battles and, and win them. But we got to stay on guard. We're in a battleground, not a playground. And Satan is after us to destroy us. And so, but greater is he that is in you, the Bible says, than he that is in the world. That means if you got Jesus in you, you can win the battle because he will help you to win the battle against Satan. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I pray that you'd protect my dear ones under the sound of my voice. Keep them safe, God. Let them know that you love them and care for them, and you're going to walk with them even through the valley of the shadow of death, even through those times when it feels as though they're under direct satanic assault. You're going to give them strength within by your Holy Spirit. He's that one that delivers strength. You're going to give them wisdom to understand and discern what's going on so that they can apply the right spiritual strategy to the appropriate spiritual attack. Keep them strong and safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. I love you, but more importantly, Jesus loves you.